A few years ago, I led a digital archiving workshop for adults, professionals, and educators in Barbados. Barbados is a beautiful tropical island about 200 miles northeast of Trinidad and approximately 100 miles east of St. Vincent. As you travel around Barbados, you can't help but notice the tall swaying palm trees, the sweet and spicy aromas, and the breathtaking beaches. I stayed there for eight days. I spent three days doing workshops and the other five days were mine to travel freely around the island. Not a bad working arrangement. The island was so awesome and breathtaking that I thought my friends would not believe I had actually gone there. So to prove to them that I was actually there, a couple times I went down to the beach, put my video camera on a stump or on a boulder, and I recorded myself on videotape with the Atlantic Ocean splashing over my shoulders. The people on the beach probably thought I was insane talking to an unmanned camera, but when it was all said and done, I had proof that I was there. In August of this year, I accompanied 12 students from the Delaware Futures Group on a four-college tour through the state of Virginia. We spent four nights on the University of Virginia's campus and took campus tours at three other universities in Richmond. Over the five days, I got to spend a considerable amount of time with these 12 11th grade students, visiting classrooms, listening to tour guides, riding the highways, dining, and debriefing at the end of each day. It was an exciting and informative trip. However, one thing in particular stood out to me and was evident just about everywhere we went. The incessant and almost habitual amount of gadget play with cell phones, digital cameras, and MP3 players. On the one hand, I was thrilled to see all the students with these high-tech multifunction devices. But at the same time, I was quite disturbed at the amount of idle text messaging and frivolous conversing that seemed to consume at least 10 out of the 12 students on the tour. On our third day there, it was my turn to lead the debriefing session. By then, we had visited three campuses and I had taken approximately 300 pictures of the town, the students, and our surroundings. During my debriefing session, I quickly shared my Barbados story with them, and then I asked them, if our trip were to end tonight, what proof would you have of having visited any of the universities that we had toured? All of the students had cell phones with video, still, and voice recording capability, all of the students had mp3 players, but none of them had used any of their high-tech gadgets to document or to archive any of the important people, places, or things that we had experienced. I explained to the students that they could use their cell phones to take pictures of the campus buildings, the classrooms, and their tour guides. I told them that they could use the voice recorder feature of their cell phones to record important information about admissions requirements. I told them that their iPods and MP3 players were capable of holding as much information as could be found at the Douglas Wilder Library. My suggestions and recommendations must have had an influence on the students because the next day Half of the students were using their cell phones and digital cameras to take smart, functional, and meaningful pictures of the University of Virginia campus. The images they shot at the university library, the rotunda, and at the cafeteria could be used in a slideshow, in a blog post, or email to family and friends. What a refreshing sight. The students were well on their way to creating a digital record of their visit to the University of Virginia campus. But by lunchtime, many of them were back to sending frivolous text messages to their buddies back home and conversing idly while bopping to the beat of their MP3 players. How can we as educators help students find a happy medium between idle and frivolous gadget play and responsible and functional digital archiving? 
As classroom facilitators, what are the best ways to utilize these powerful disruptive technologies in schools that actually punish students for bringing cell phones, iPods, and digital cameras into the school building? What are the best ways to get students to buy into blogs, wikis, and podcasts? Let's explore these questions and challenges together when I present what did you do in school today, yesterday, and three years ago at the K-12 online conference coming in October of 2008? I'm H. Songhai.